Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I have three rosés here in front of me and I'm going to taste them in order of ascending darkness. Um, and um, so let's set in straight away. First one is Chateau des Sarins, 2013 Côte de Provence. Uh, now, I've already done a video about this one um, and uh, I tasted it and I was... It felt like the bottle was having a bad hair day um, and uh, there was a slightly strange... I don't know what it was, but um, and I kept the bottle for a few days and it didn't seem to go away. So let's have a see um, whether this second bottle is better. Give it a whirl. Well, the problem with the first one, it was, um, it, it just smelt, it, it, it was pongy. Um, here, um, I stick my nose in and um, I, it, 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 there's something about it that almost feels this, this. This almost feels like a more mature wine. I'm tasting it only about a week or so after after tasting the previous bottle, uh, but um, it feels like it's opened up a little bit uh, and it's slightly fleshier. And um, uh, so there's fruit flavours coming through. It, it, it's strange. It's not one of those where so the, sometimes I get that this like sandy red fruit character on Provence rosés. Here it's uh, it, it smells a bit a little bit more peachy. Let's taste it. Yes, and that's looking pretty good. Um, I, I, um, I, I'm, I'm glad I, I tried another bottle. Uh, what's good about it is um, there's this richness and the sandy character does come through when you taste it. Maybe not so much the red fruit, uh, but there is this uh, slightly voluptuous, peachy uh, vanilla edge. Um, and um, and uh, actually, uh, to be honest, I mean, I, if I had my eyes closed, I'm not sure whether I would say with any degree of confidence that it was a pink wine rather than a white wine. But... Um, it's got a nice mixture of richness and uh, and crispness, and uh, so um, yes, good job. I tried the second bottle. Let's try a first bottle uh, from Chile, uh, 2013 Aquitania Rosé, uh, and made from uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, and it's from Maipo, is it? Yeah, Maipo. I'll give it a whirl. A slight rose hip character here, um, and um, I don't know. It, it, yes, it certainly tastes more red than the uh, the previous uh, pink. Uh, in in terms of um, maybe there is a little. There's a gentle strawberry and a little bit of raspberry and red cherry in there. Uh, it smells like it's it's a much uh, more sweet, rounded, and um, maybe it's like crowd pleasing. It doesn't feel like it's got as high cheekbones as the uh, as the Chateau de Saron. Alcohol wise, 13 and a half versus 12 and a half. Yeah, it, it smells like it's gonna be a, a, a juicier, richer wine, but maybe not as classy. Let's have a see. It's ever so slightly medicinal, that. Um, I like that sweet strawberry cordial uh, in small amounts here. Maybe they've just got it a little bit too, uh, uh, too prominent, so. Um, Good, but uh, but not great. Okay, try the next one. Uh, so we're in uh, Portugal for this one. Uh, Tercius 2013 Rosé, and where uh, from Tejo uh, and the uh, made from Trigo Nacional, um, which is a big stern grape, and Castelhao, which is a rounded, juicy, friendly grape. Um, maybe think about them. Um, as, I think of Cabernet Sauvignon as being a bit like, uh, sorry, Turiga Nacional as being a bit like Cabernet Sauvignon, so stern and fruity. Uh, Castellao uh, being not so much mellow, but being more Grenache. It's sort of warm hearted and uh, juicy, and uh, yeah, it just tells everyone to chill and uh, take a chill pill. And maybe I'll take a chill pill and give this a sniff. There's a slightly. Um, almost medicinal character that I get here. Um, and um, I, again, the rose hips, but not as, uh, not as strong as, uh, as I was getting it on the, uh, on the Aquitania. Um, it, it feels like there is going to be a, feels like, it's strange, it's, it's deeper in colour, but it feels like it's going to be um, a, a lighter style. Alcohol-wise, we were going from 13.5 on the previous one, yeah, back down to 12.5. So uh, I think we've just got deeper coloured uh, grapes in the first place. And uh, uh, so they, they, they quite naturally made a, a, a darker... Um, a, a, a darker wine, or maybe they gave it more time on the skins. I don't know. Maybe I'll shut up and taste it. Like blackberry and apple pie. There is a, um, a slightly cooked apple character in there, uh, and then there is this uh, uh, juicy, uh, juicy blackberries. But blackberries that aren't quite. There. Sometimes when you pick blackberries and they've gone all mushy, uh, they they lose a lot of their um, of, of their perkiness. Here, maybe you pick them that little bit too early. 
so there's still that tartness there so i get that appley tartness and i think it's yes it's probably the uh, early picking uh, that's uh, that, that, that that's given given that um, I think I'd prefer it to the Aquitania. Uh, the Aquitania was just a little bit too uh, rounded and, uh, uh, and voluptuous. But um, my good, I'm pretty pleased to see that Chateau de Saran, um, after a uh, not a very successful uh, first bottle, has uh, returned in style with the second bottle. So uh, I'm very pleased that uh, I've been able to try that and rectify the situation. See you soon.